Hello all you freedom lovers out there and welcome to part two of how to galil uh, force matching our bolt. So previously we covered how to install our barrel into our receiver. It's, uh, it's threaded, it needs to be torqued to spec. We've also covered how to strip our bolt and now we're gonna need to force match that bolt. Before we go any further, let's go ahead and cover our intent. Why are we doing this? Well, this is for informational purposes only. All the work should be done by or under the supervision of a licensed and professional gunsmith. So having this information arms you with the knowledge uh, to, to understand the process in when you're discussing with your gunsmith or, you know, uh, uh, you'll know what is taking place. You're not completely in the dark. So with that said, let's go ahead and carry on. Um, some things that we're going to need. Obviously, uh, we, we, you know, beyond a torque to spec uh, barrel. We don't wanna be removing any material on our bolt until this is fixed in place, it's torqued and it's to spec and, and we know that this is a fixed point in space, all right? Um, I've got my, my punch here, this is more for visual aid. Uh, we're gonna need some marking compound, a go and a no-go gauge. Uh, we're gonna be using the go gauge quite a bit and then the no-go gauge as we start to get closer. And uh, you're also going to need your um, bolt carrier. Okay, that's gonna come in handy later on as well. Um, I'll go ahead and show you guys, check this out. So this, if I can get it into frame here, this here is a, uh, it's a sewing machine light, gooseneck. They're super cheap and affordable, like 20 bucks. You get them on Amazon or whatever. Uh, but I use these quite a bit. I really wanted to add you know, some more visibility in there so you can see what is going on and what we're doing. Um, next, jeweler's files. Uh, this is one of my many common uh, hand tools I use quite a bit. I may break out some other files depending on what we get into. It's gonna, sometimes these things just kind of go by feel and in, in what we are going to need. Um, so yeah, that pretty much covers it. Let's. Uh, Let's get into it here. So for our bolt, let's understand what's going on, what we need to make sure that we're doing. So we, we, we can set our bolt into our receiver and we need to, we need to make sure that it's, that there's clearance for the ejector. So our ejector is this, uh, this chunk of metal sticking out of the rail here. And that is what the bat, uh, what, uh, the case head as this is coming back, kicks the case head or it uh, pushes the case head and ejects the brass or the steel, uh, the, the, uh, the casing, if you will, out of the ejection port during the cycle of operations. So either way, uh, some makers, you may have to profile this down. Don't use a Dremel, please. Uh, use, use files and, and go slow. This is not something that you wanna goon up, all right, and, or, or make it too short because you got too aggressive with removing material. You want to make sure that you have plenty of clearance. If, if there's too much ejector on there, what happens is your, your stem is going to get kicked over to the left, and then our bolt face isn't going to be able to be flush. It's not allowing it to be uh, uh, you know, aligned along that axis of the bore, which is what we need to accomplish. We also need to check out this lug right here on the left, and if we can see this here. Uh, many times you're going to have to install your bullet guide and if uh, you know you rivet that in and this channel here has to be clear for the lug and uh, this on the left hand side here if this bullet guide isn't properly installed it may impede the uh, the clearance for that lug so as the bolt moves forward it's going to hit the bullet guide and then you go oh no what's wrong and then you might be trying to clearance something else out thinking that, oh, I just need to make room for it when it didn't have a chance to get, that lug didn't have a chance to go forward anymore. So as this moves forward, now you see it wants to cam. And those are our lugs. We have, uh, we have two of them here for our trunnion. And what's happening is that's what's locking our chamber into place again during the cycle of operations. So I've, I've heard of, uh, I've heard of guys using honing compound, okay, which is a, uh, it's, it's a compound with a, a variety of grits 
you know, they have coarse, they have fine, you know, just whatever you tend to get in there. They squirt a bunch of that in there and they start working in this action. And the, my problem with that is, is that gets, it gets over everything. It gets all over everything. And then we, we start to remove material from dimensions that don't need it, okay? When we're force matching our bolt, we have, and this is why I want you to understand this, is we have these, these lugs are camming into place to lock. And there's this, this, this lug here on the right side of the trunnion. That is on the back of this lug here, okay? Those two surfaces are mating and locking into place. Then on the left side, we have the back of this lug, and that is mating up with this material. So let's try that. Let's see if we can see this here. So this lug is now locked into place by this material. So removing material from everywhere else around here is just inducing slop into this, into this part that doesn't need it. It's unnecessary. Okay, so force matching. So that just means really the only two places that we need to remove material are here and here. And when we remove material from that, That'll allow, uh, that'll allow the bolt to move closer as it's camming because we're removing material. This is, this, is set at, this is at an angle, okay? And so as that locks into place and it goes into battery, okay, that is going to let us help us get closer uh, or achieve our proper headspace. So without anything in there, this cam's over and, and this, this lug right here is almost you know, all the way over against against this side of the receiver. You might think, oh, that's good. Nope. <laughs> We're gonna take our go, our go gauge here. We're gonna put our go gauge into the chamber. And then when we close, close in on it, again, we wanna make sure that our bolt is straight. It's not canted. We want the bolt face and uh, the, the back of the barrel, our chamber, uh, to be able to mate flush in that way. And then when it starts to cam over, oh, nope, that's as far as it goes, okay? So this is where our friend, marking compound comes in. And here's the thing is we don't have to get crazy with this, okay? Because this stuff gets messy. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some marking compound on the lug, on the back of the lug. Now, if you've got Dicom or whatever, and and you wanna you wanna put marking compound over the, you know the whole face of the bolt, man, go right on ahead, and it's not you're just gonna end up washing it all off or cleaning it all off anyway. Okay, so now we can take our bolt and understanding where we need to remove some material from these lugs, I wanna make sure that I pay attention to this, this, uh, these faces here, these uh, surfaces, if you will. And you need to also pay attention to these angles. This one actually, if I'm just inspecting this here, this is another thing I like to do with the parts. Uh, we can see just a little bit of a divot here. Just, uh, just looks like a little bit of wear in the material, but either way. All right, let's, uh, let's give this, let's see if I can see this here. All right, so I've taken a little bit of material out there. Now, this is where we get a little, little trickier because this side, 
This side is at an angle and we wanna make sure that we maintain that angle. So let's not go too crazy there. And you'll notice, you'll notice that we have, you know, this kind of a flat angle here and then it starts to make this like ramp, right? And that's, that's helping that, uh, that cam. So I'm cheating at the leading edge of the ramp. In other words, I just want to remove a little bit of material here. And then I want to check this because we're not even we're not even close to getting this to cam over. So I want to uh, I want to get some of this material out of the way so we can get there. For me, to be honest, I'm not used to uh, to working under a camera. That's what she said. Okay, we don't. I don't tend to like those edges to be too sharp. And like I said, we, we've got some damage there that I can see previously. So I'm just making sure that, that that's kind of uniform. Got a little bit of a bevel to it. Normally you don't you don't always want to make a sawing motion, if you will, with your with your file, but it's my tools, I'll do what I want. All right, so never want to go too long without giving this a check. So let's try this out again. I don't think it's going to be anywhere close, but you never know. So we go to try to cam this over. And again, yeah, we're, <laughs> we definitely have a little ways to go. Another thing we can do is uh, instead of having this on there, I put it up on the block and now I can, you know, uh, it makes sure that you don't cheat this way or, or a certain way because of the handle. If we bring it up off the surface a little bit, as long as you, you know, you've got a nice working surface, you can, uh, that kind of helps you a little bit. And you, you really got to be, you know, fresh, kind of calm. That's, uh, that's honestly, that is why I stopped yesterday. Uh, and you know, I filmed part one yesterday, but then I was like, you know, I'm a little, I'm a little anxious, you know, I'm not fresh, um, using a round file in this corner right here, you know, so like you want to make sure that you are mentally prepared to do this work. Well, that does happen to do this work. I can see. I can see a little bit of touch in here and a little bit of touch in here. So we're using the marking solution, you know, basically, uh, or a marking compound. And you're just looking at the places where it's disturbed, right? And you put the marking compound on and uh, whatever bright spots or, you know, spots that are disturbed, that's where you would go in and remove a little bit of material and then hit it with more marking compound. And that's the process. You just keep doing that. The other nice part about force matching is you get to control, you know, how smooth those surfaces are, how uniform those surfaces are. I would much rather me work that over and make sure that it's good and also get it to the proper headspace in that process. Okay, I'm gonna do another trick. We're gonna put our bolt into our carrier. Okay. Then we're gonna try to close it. And this is gonna give it just a little bit more force. See where it's hitting. I 
see right here, you know, leading edges of the lugs and right there. Okay. What I'm looking for here is I'm looking at the engagement of this lug. I'm looking at, you know, the, uh, the mating surfaces, how straight that line or where it is in relation to this one. Okay, so it's not all just marking compound. You really need to try to get eyes inside there and, you know, just see how it's marrying up. That's all I've done. From there to there, I'm getting a little bit of cam now. And that's that's why I say this, this process is, is tedious, right? Because we need this lug to be all the way over here. So we've got quite a bit of material to, uh, to take off. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a, uh, <laughs> one of my hacks, one of my cheats. So right there, check this out. It's the poor man marking solution. And you know what? It works just fine. This is what I'm gonna do. And you will see a little bit of, a little bit of work in there. And I like using this because it's, uh, it works just fine and you can see here again, bright mark, bright mark. Cool. I also see that we're starting to get past the leading edge here of our angle. So we're starting to work up this, uh, this ramp, if you will. And I'm still, still getting contact over on the other side in the center. So... Let us work this angle a little bit. And again, we gotta feather that material back. We just have to take a little bit off this ramp at a time, trying to maintain the same uh, general angle. Because if you get too aggressive with that, that's going to be a problem. You don't, you don't want it to go at the angle and then sharply decline down here. You want it to be a nice gradual angle all the way back in that lug. Let's see what that does. Oh, buddy. Now, rawhide hammer. What I want to do is I want to I want to kind of whack this lug. Make sure I'm still in frame. I want to whack this lug right here. See if, how we can get it to cam. And really, that's what I'm trying to do. There is just force the camming action and see, try to get visual here. Okay, center of the lug there, that leading edge. This leading edge is right about center there. So again, it's, it's starting to work up the ramp. We just need to keep going. And don't forget,
Okay, so this is what I want to show you here. Again, another thing that I'm looking at is, I don't know if you can see this or not, but again, this line that's created between the lug and the receiver, I want to see how straight that line is. I want to make sure that, you know, we have uh, consistency between those two, that it's not too angled. All right. Bright mark and bright mark. So. And I'm, I'm pressing from the back like this to push. I want, I want to push evenly into the face of the chamber, into the barrel there, okay? I don't wanna, I don't wanna like cant it off to one side. I'm, I'm trying to put pressure to make sure that it's straight. That way I'm not, I'm not inducing a problem, you know, like pitching the thing up this way or pushing it down, you know, we, we want to have even pressure across the bolt face when we do this. Looks like we have good contact here. We're getting pretty decent contact up here. So typically if I've got, you know, even um, contact on both sides, I, you know, I want to take off, you know, I really wanted to work this side, but I took a little bit off on both sides just so I'm not removing too much material on from one end if I feel like I've got it, you know, pretty well aligned. Okay. Now we can take some sandpaper and this is just, this, this is actually, it's pretty war. Um, you know, uh, maybe a 240 or, you know, something in that, that realm. Don't go 120 or, or lower as we're not trying to remove a whole lot of material. We're just, I'm just trying to smooth out maybe some of the, the tool marks, even from these files. Let's see what this does. Looking real good on this lug. Looking real good on the other side. I'm pretty. I'm pretty happy with, you know, what we have going on here. And what I see is, um, 
you know, we've got pretty even contact here. And then on this lug where it's got the ramp, it goes and then it stops abruptly. There's this sharp line. So that's, that's what's stopping is again, this, we need to take um, some of that, that ramp out of it. If, uh, if you push on, on just the charging handle, what are you doing? You're pushing it over from the side. You need to push from the back. You know, this is, this looks pretty good. Uh, you know, we've got right there in the middle of the lug, good contact. And same thing, you know, middle, middle of this side, it's looking pretty good. But then it just stops abruptly. So again, it's our, our ramp. Hopefully you all show us a little bit of love. Getting exposure into this industry is uh, is kind of difficult. You know, we can't really sponsor posts. We can't really uh, buy ad space, you know, on social media or whatever. Yeah, there's influencers and stuff. But I'm not really interested in, in paying influencers to develop our reputation. Um, I would rather our reputation develop organically because, you know, it's recognized for our, our quality and what we do not just how much we pay somebody who has a bunch of follows. You know, while I, while I have the mic here, I can explain a little bit about what evocatus means. Uh, it's not just kind of a fun little word that we came up with, put a lot of thought into it. So I'm retired from the Marine Corps. I retired in January of 2015. And my father was a Marine in Vietnam. That's who makes our barrels. He's pretty incredible. And Jeff, he was uh, in the Army, SF Medic. And all of us being veterans, um, we look at building guns uh, as, you know, serving our country again. We look at it as, uh, you know, our oaths to the Constitution and our, our support of the Second Amendment in that, you know, we are, we're serving in support of those things. So an evocatus in the early Roman army was a soldier who had served their time and got out you know, and then came back into service upon request of the commander. And more than likely, it, you know, uh, correct pronunciation is evocatus, but, you know, I've Americanized it and it rolls off my tongue easier, so I just call it evocatus. Because, you know, America. But that's what that means. It's what, you know, it's what, that's why we chose that. <laughs> Another fun fact, if you're actually paying attention and you've stayed this long, we were originally going to name ourselves Evocatus Strategic Engineering. All right. Um, fancy. Well, uh, in starting our company, the state of Oklahoma will not allow you to add the word engineering into your company name unless you are an engineer, and we are not. So at the last minute, we had to dump it. We had to just strike engineer off of it, or engineering, and that's how it got stuck with Evocatus Strategic. Uh, it wasn't a, a copy off of Haley Strategic, although, you know, mad respect for... Uh, for Travis, 
Haley and uh, Semper Fidelis, you know, man, I was watching his Magpul videos uh, with him in the beard, you know, back in the day. So he's an OG. But no, we weren't just like, oh, we're just trying to, I've, I've heard people try to call us out about that. You know, are you just trying to copy off of them? No, uh, that wasn't the intention. And honestly, I'd rather just go buy Avocatus. Still not into battery. And, you know, I'm getting this out because I want to get this video out to you guys. Um, good and good. So I'm happy with the wear here. See if you can see this. So contact there, contact there. But anyway, uh, this is one of those jobs where you, it, it is tedious and you really need to like, Hey, if you're not, if, if you're tired of doing it, <laughs> put it down you know, go do something else and come back to it later. You don't have to knock it all, all out at once. And like I said, I'm just kind of getting it out uh, for you, the viewers at home. Because, you know, I got that, I got the part one out. And it doesn't really uh, show you how to do it. My first job in the Marine Corps, I started out my first nine years enlisted. And my first job in the Marine Corps was, uh, I was an airframes mechanic on Harriers. And um, when I came back from Afghanistan and Iraq, you know, right after 9-11, I was a Lance Coconut when 9-11 happened. Um, deployed and did all the things. And by the time I got back from there, I, I was a sergeant. I had pinned on sergeant. I tried to go to the drill field, and but the stop loss squashed all that and they wanted me to be an A school instructor uh, in Pensacola. So that's what allowed me to go to college at night, get my degree, uh, put in for a flight package and do the officer and pilot thing. Well, uh, teaching metal fabrication and basic hydraulic systems and all that kind of stuff at the A school, I used to teach how to buck solid rivets and all these things, which trans translates very nicely to AKs as you can imagine. I've been thinking about making some videos just on, on those subjects. And you know, if that sounds like something that you guys would be interested in, hit me up, maybe say something in, in the comments and let me know. Be like, yeah, I would love to learn some metal fabrication stuff. Um, you know, I can give you the formulas for how to calculate bend allowance, how to calculate, you know, how long your rivet shank should be, how, you know, the bucktail, like there's formulas for all that kind of stuff. In riveting AKs, it doesn't really, doesn't really always come into effect, but it's still good knowledge to have. All right, still looking good. Still happy with this. Still not getting into battery, <laughs> but them's the brakes. That's showbiz, baby. Just have a positive mental attitude and freaking monster. And keep on keeping on. Worst thing you can do is get in a rush, remove a whole bunch of material from this, go in and, you know, blow past your headspace. You can't add the material back to it, you pretty much have to get a new bolt. Start over.
Now for the real test. Our no-go gauge. So it closed on a go gauge. And it won't close on a no-go gauge. That is properly headspaced glow bolt. So again, we're going to put our go gauge in there. And again, we now have proper headspace.